So, we were discussing the traffic light controller design, design of a traffic light controller as an example of a system design. We have earlier seen how to design uh, and implement uh, combination logic and sequential logic or even circuits which contain both combination and sequential logic using building blocks such as gates, then multiplexers and decoders, and ROM, programmable logic array, programmable logic devices. Likewise, in sequential circuits, flip flops, registers, shift registers, counters, etc. But when you have a digital system to be designed, you need to go through the design process, the starting from specifications to specification to the implementation. As I has repeatedly said in this course, understanding the specifications clearly and coming up with a requirement in terms of signals and hardware, that is the most important step. From then on, it is a question of procedure, systematic methods are available. You want simplification, there are steps available. If you do not want simplification, there are procedures available. Depending on type of hardware you want to use, there are procedures available. So, the implementation, hardware, the hardware putting it together, testing, all this is important. I do not say anything is less important. Unless the system works, there is no use. System, your design has no meaning unless it has been put in, put in the field and tested. But from a designer's point of view, from a design engineer's point of view, it is the question of understanding the design specifications and coming up with a blueprint of what to do. That is the state graph, the type of examples you have seen. There are other techniques. This one is called state machines, and algorithmic state machine charts and all that. So, with that in mind, we discuss the requirements specifications and requirement of a traffic light controller. I will not repeat those things. We have, we have seen it in the last lecture. Finally, we ended up with this state graph, if you remember. There are six states. Uh, state in which the main, main light is green, side light and turn light are red. Then it goes to a main light yellow phase. Then the turn light green main light continues to be green from left to right. From here we go to the phase where the turn signal, turn light becomes yellow and then we go to the phase where the side light is green. In this case, we halt the flow of the main road from left to right as well as right to left and then we have the yellow light, uh, side light green. Uh, yellow phase and after the yellow phase, it goes back to the first state. So, we said there are four lights M 1, M 2, these are the two main street lights. This is for right left to right traffic, this is for right to left traffic. Turn. light, side light, turning is for this turning, side light is for this turning and each one of them can be a red, yellow or green and all those conditions under which this happens we have already discussed in detail based on which are with the state graph. Now, the question is to implement the state graph. So, we discussed the in inputs and outputs. I forgot to mention one important input. When, what are the inputs and what are the outputs available for the system? What are the inputs available in the system? What are the outputs that are expected of the system? The outputs are the lights, the signal which will activate a light of course, the, the digital signal is 0 to 5 volts, 0, or 0 volts or 5 volts signal that you get out of a digital gate may be too weak in terms of current to drive a light huge light in a traffic light control, in a traffic light junction, but you can always uh, use drivers. So, we are not worried about all those hardware features where how the signal from the 
traffic light controller IC or a circuit digital circuit is converted into a signal which is um, strong enough to activate the lights switch on and switch off. So, you need to if required amplify it or you need to boost it into either in voltage level or current level depending on the type of the lights were given. We will not talk about that point. So, when you say here these signals red, green, yellow they are all the outputs of a digital circuit. That is one thing of course, that is uh, understood. What I was referring to when I said I forgot to mention something is, when you enter a state you have to watch a, the period, we discussed periods, we said that M T stands for the time, M G stands for the main green. So, there are four timings of four time intervals of importance in this T M G where duration for which main is green, T main green, T T G duration for which turn signal is green, T S G duration for which side light is green, this, this and this and then T y duration for which yellow light is green, this is yellow, I am sorry yellow light, the lights are yellow, I said yellow light. So, yellow lights all the all the cases we did not distinguish between the yellow for the main and yellow for the side, just to make the problem simple. Of course, there are lots of features you can introduce as I said, you can have different timings, you can have pedestrian switches, all those things and you can have four way traffic, six way traffic that is four ways in the sense, so two way street in both sides and then both both sides there can be left turn or right turn and all those things, make it as um, practical or um, interesting as possible. What I meant was, when you say you are uh, monitoring these timings, there must be a hardware in the system, the hardware has to be monitored for the duration of the time when the time is elapsed the state has to change. For example, when the circuit is in this state, this will remain in this state as long as T m g is not completed, the duration T m g is not completed. When T m g is completed it goes to this state. From here it stays in this state as long as T y is not completed, during T y it is here at the end of T y it goes here like that. So, there is a provision for monitoring the signal. So, these are the inputs to the system T m g T T G, T S G, T Y, the time intervals for which different lights are defined to be green as well as yellow or the inputs to the system, how are you going to get those time, who is going to give you those times. So, there must be a hardware timer, we will not go into the details, you know how to do this, I will tell you how to do this in a simple way. So, I will call it a simple timer. So, you can define the timed intervals like for example, as I said T m g can be 2 seconds, I mean 2 minutes or 1 minute maybe, this can be 30 seconds, this can be 30 seconds or this can be 20 seconds, this can be 30 seconds whatever depending on the traffic, maybe 30 and 20 and then this may be again another 20, but how are you going to measure those? So, I need to have a timer which is nothing but a counter, we know how to get time intervals from a counter the number of flip flops that we desired. So, you I, I have to give a clock to this the clock is a system clock they need not be related to any of these need not be any of these timings it can be an independent time. For example, I can have a clock which is much faster than any of these periods and then I have to count a definite number of these period clock periods in order to get each of these signals, is it not? For example, 2000 counts may be this, as an example, 1000 counts, 2000 counts for this, 500 counts for this, 400 counts for this, 400 counts for this, something like that you can define to define the duration. This depends on the duration you want for these different lights to be green or yellow and the period of the clock signal you are feeding into the system. The same clock will be the clock will be used in your flip flops, then then only it will be a synchronism between the, the state changes and the 
timer change, right? So, but then the, there is a counter which keeps running all the time with a clock and I have to know which time corresponds to which. Fortunately, these are non-overlapping intervals. I can only, I want only one time at a particular time, a particular duration, particular operation for in the sequence. If I am interested in monitoring TMG, I do not have to worry about these things because in this state only TMG is important. In this state only TY is important. In this state only TTG is important. In this state again TY. In this state only TSG is important. So, when I am monitoring a time of particular duration, the other times are no consequence to us. So, I can have a simple timer started by a clock and give different outputs when the count has reached let us say 1000, 2500, 400 whatever is the count fixed for different durations. When the duration is counted, that will be the signal for this state to go from here to here for example or the circuit to go from this state to this state. So, the output of this timer would be TMG, TTG, TSG, TY. All that is fine, but then the clock goes on. But when I want, I, I want a starting point also, only then I can fix my time. When the clock goes on, it goes through all this depending on the count, depending on the number of bits in the clock, number of bits in the counter. When the clock goes on, the counter keeps counting to the highest possible count using those many bits, goes back to 0 and starts all over again. One of those counts is a TY or one of those counts is TMG, etcetera, etcetera. But then how do you know when to start? So, every time I need a fresh count to be started, I, I need a signal called start timer. That means, normally I will have a counter which, which free runs, but in this case I will not have a counter which is free runs. The counter will not count unless there is a count enable. The start timer can be a count enable. Even though you have fed a clock to the counter, it will not count until and unless you give a signal called count enable. Moment the count enable comes, it starts counting from 0 upwards or whatever, wherever left, you know. So, you can reset and start all over again, whatever it is. So, you can have a reset and uh, once you go to a state, you can reset and when you, when you want to count, you start counting. So, when that particular count is reached, that particular signal is. So, this ST is a start signal which is required to be generated also by this. So, when I said these are the only lights, light signals required out of this output, it is it's not complete in the sense I have forgotten, I have left out the start timer. So, one more signal to be start timer is also an output. For example, when you want to calculate the When you want to calculate the count of find the capacity of the ROM, ROM required to do this, we count the number of inputs and number of outputs. We have only counted the number of outputs as 4 lights, each of them have 3 states, red, yellow, green, so 12 outputs. So, there is really one more output called ST output also has to be done. So, whenever you want to start a timer, you, you issue a signal start timer and then it starts counting and then when a particular count is reached, it goes. And the next time you want another count. So, when you reach the state, you can reset that circuit, reset that count again, start all over again for the next sequence. There is one thing I wanted to mention as an important hardware feature. Of course, conceptually it is all right, but then as I said, final goal is to make a hardware which works. Concepts can only take you that far. So far, the other is uh, nitty gritty of the hardware. That has to make it work. That is the reason for all these bugs in the systems. When you, when you have a system, when you buy a computer, or when you have an electronic gadget, it doesn't work because the design is good. But then somebody forgot to put an earth properly. Somebody forgot to give a signal which is supposed to be clearing the whole thing. 
So, these are the pitfalls that is where the design as I said these are all design specifications this phase is very important and then I can have one more state which I said the other day if you want you can have a starting state or reset state. See normally when you switch on it can there are three flip flops as I said already A, B, C and each of these flip flops go through there are six states only. So, they will go to six different states and when you switch on for the first time it can any of these one particular any of these things could be the starting state and then we can go on from there that is not a problem. But generally in any of these circuits you have a reset state because of you want to service or you want to switch off the lights make all of them zeros all the lights will be off we want to keep it there for a while remove the clock from the system and then it will remain. So, usually a reset state will be there we will call this S0 in this case and so this reset is a force reset when you switch on the system we can force the circuit to go to reset state. So, that from then on it goes through the sequence that we want. So, we can always it is always possible to get an asynchronous reset this is what this. So, system can be reset For the circuit to reset on the start by a push button or something it can be asynchronous all the counters can be 0 0 0. Before you switch, uh, switch on the power for the first time circuit in the morning you want to start the time uh, traffic light controller start the circuit switch on the power and then reset it by a push button and then it is 0 0 0 state from then on it most of the proper sequence. So, when it is not there we will make that when the circuit is in reset state switch off the power that is in reset state all the lights are off. There is one option that is not I am saying it is the only way to do things. See design is always open ended only one thing you have to make sure that all these specifications are met the customer gives you a design um, problem he gives you a design assignment and you are supposed to carry it out at meet to all the specifications. Then comes the efficiency the most efficient way you have to do it most in a most uh, cost effective way do it in a way such that it uh, in reduces power consumption etcetera these are features. But first you have to satisfy all the requirements and whenever there is any design design is always open ended as unlike analysis make an analysis there is always one possibility and then you. So, design is an open ended problem. So, this is one possibility this I am discussing that is all you may think of some other way if you as long as you think of a better way it is good for you as long as as I said it is not very inefficient compared to this I am not saying it should be always better than this by saving at least one more gate no as long as the circuit is similar even by your innovative design even if it consume a couple of extra gates that is better than taking somebody's circuit which is uh, designed already. So, innovation is required in the design because some ideas which I have forgotten or overlooked will come out in the design. So, with this background we can write the now the state table from then on you know how to proceed right. So, the state table I will call it state table as I said uh, we are going to use um, D flip flops state table becomes a transition table inputs and outputs also will be included. So, to make life simple I will map S0 as 0, 0, 0, S1, 0, 0, 1 and so forth. S6 will be these are the 7 states we need to um, implement, correct. So, the present state input. Next 
instead outputs outputs are as I said as T and then all these lights main green main yellow M1 and M2 we call them if you remember M1 green M1 yellow M1 red Not the same space, what I will do is I will write M one M two T and side will always follow the red, yellow, green pattern, so that I do not have to. So, first light is, so this is the pattern, this is the order in which we will write the outputs. You may have to help me here to finish the table fast, otherwise it will take forever for me to finish this. So, we will call this A, B, C and A plus B plus C plus as usual. Question said 0, 0, 0, input is nothing, always goes to 0, 0, 1, correct? And only light is 1, st, you have to get started, the, the, because once you move here, the timer will start. So, I can as soon as I hear, I can just start the timer. Okay, after all, one clock count, it does not matter. I will do it one clock count earlier, right? One clock count earlier than after reaching here, it should count TMG. But once I am there, I do not know how to start it. So, I will start it and then go here. Suppose you have 2000 count, you want to program it, you can count for 2001 or you can program it for 1999. Does not matter really. One clock count is a small short duration. And all other signals are 0. So, when I put 0, it is a concatenation of all the signals. Nothing else. It is a 0 state. Then the next state is 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, there is only one signal. The TMG is off. TMG is off. It stays in 0, 0, 1 and if it is on, it goes to what? I asked you to help me so you can finish the table fast. Huh? What, why are you hesitating so much? Is it so difficult to read this simple? I am asking you because I cannot read parallelly, no? parallax. <laughs> Otherwise, I would not have asked you for this simple favor. Do not want to commit. Why commit and get involved? Eh? That is the motto. Right. ST will be on only when you go to the next. Here, ST will not be on because we are already switched on ST and we have to wait for TMG. Right. So, what will be the output? What, which lights will be on? Which lights will be off? For M1, for M1, it will be 0, 0, 001, M2 also 0, 0, 001, right? Then turn 100, 0, 0, 0, 0. 
and this is the same thing depending on whichever state it is, is it not? In state S1, the lights are there, these are what I told you was Moore machine. So, outputs are defined for the XOR for this output, all other outputs are defined for the state. ST alone changes because ST depends on the timing. The time is over only I can start the timer. So, ST is a Moore output, all others are milli outputs. Do you understand? ST is a Moore output because milli output, ST is a milli output because I can only change the start the timer when I leave that state to go to the next state. Next one. 0 and 0 the only thing to be monitored is T y, so there are only two states and what are the two states? Again 0 1 0, 1 0 0, 0 1 1. This table is the simplest table you can think of to write, the state is always one more, right? State graph is the simplest state graph and then again you start the timer when you leave the state. As long as you are in yellow state, you count the timing, leave the timing. So, I am going to for now assume that ST resets and starts is because otherwise I have to define another signal for resetting and then starting, right. So, right now we will assume that ST has the, it will reset and start or it will reset and okay, it has to reset and start, okay. So, we will assume that otherwise it is going to be difficult to have one more signal to reset and then to start. So, ST is a signal which is that means the timer is have to be designed with a proper input circuitry. Maybe flip flops the counters, but a little bit of extra combination logic which will take the ST signal first for one clock cycle it will, uh, will clear it immediately it will clear it and then it will start one clock cycle. All I need from you is this otherwise it is so simple tell me what is the lights? Main? Huh? Is it not yellow? It is yellow. M2 is yellow, is it? Okay. 0, 0, 001. Then? Then? Okay. Next one is what? TTG? Tell me what is the signal? Huh? Zero? Zero zero. Okay. Even if it is same, you have to tell me because I have no way of verifying looking through that. Then one zero zero. This is zero zero one and this is one zero zero. Correct? Then 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, T y bar, T y, T y bar is what? 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, what? 0, 1, 0, this one? 1? This one? T M G T S G, right? Come on. Huh? One zero zero. One zero zero. Okay. Then? Right. Then? Huh? One zero zero. Zero zero one. 
correct. Finally, one zero one, one one zero, T Y bar, T Y. goes back to the starting state 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 oh my god finally it's 1 1 1 it is not going to happen. So, irrespective of that, it is do not care, so we will put it 0, 0, 0. And all the signals will be 0. We will make all zeros so that no problem occurs if it comes to this state. It is a state table or transition table as you want to call it, if you want to call it whatever. Now, you want a ROM, ROM implementation how many inputs are there? inputs are 3 for the state variables and 4 external inputs namely T M G, T T G, T S G, T Y. So, 7 inputs, outputs are 3 for the state variables, 12 for this, 1 for this, 13, 13 plus 3 is 16. Of course, as I said there is a possibility to concatenate or compact the outputs by Defining the relationship between, you can always define a relationship between red light and a green light. For example, in the same street, the red and green cannot be on at the same time. And in the main street, red, a main street green and side street green cannot be on at the same time. To use all those relationships, we may be able to come up with a simpler output table that is called ROM compaction. We want to reduce the size of the ROM, the width of the ROM, word, word width, we can do that. They used to do that earlier on. Now, today, as I said, today is the technology is not a big problem. The size of the ROM is not a problem at all, especially for small designs like that. Nobody does any of those things. It is called ROM compaction. Using the relationship between the different outputs, if they are dependent, naturally here they are dependent. The outputs are not independent of each other. Outputs are dependent on each other. You can always reduce the number of outputs by deriving some relationship between these different outputs. If you want to do that, you can do it as, a, as an exercise. ROM compaction. So, the size of the ROM would, ROM would be 2 power 7 into 16 bits and we, in addition we need 3 D flip flops, 2 into 16 bits ROM plus 3 D flip flops. Or you want gate solutions? For each one of these, you need to draw a corner map for output each of the next state outputs, you have to draw the corner map, next state you have to draw the corner maps. For each of the outputs, 13 outputs you need. So, that is 13 plus 3, 16 corner maps you draw and simplify the expressions, you get a gate solution. Or you want a multiplexer solution, let us do that, that may be interesting. So, what is a multiplexer solution going to look like? Mux based implementation. Each output you need to provide an max, 16 by 16 to 1 max, I mean 8 to 1 max, 8 to 1 max. So, we will take the first one and the next state variable A plus, I will do for 1 or 2 you can complete the rest. So, the variables are A, B, C, the present states, 
next here should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This will be the A plus. Next head variable A plus will be given by this max. So, all you have to do is to look at this column. So, wherever there is a 1, it is a 0, 0, 0, 1 for T, T, G. So, this is a 0, 0, 0. If T, T, G is high, this is high. So, this is T, T, G. This is 1, this is 1. This is T y bar. If T y bar is 1, if T y is 0, this is 1, so it is a T y bar. All of you know how to do this, is it not? From your earlier max based design. You look at the present state, the next state and what, what condition will make it 1. That you have to put for each present state. Present state 0, 0, 0, no condition will make it 1, so put a 0. 0, 0, 1, no condition will make it 1, put a 0. In this case, 1, 0, 1, present state, whatever is the condition, next state is 1. If you take here, the present state is 0, 1, 1, T, T, G will make it 1, T, T, G bar will not make it 1, so put a T, T, G. We have done this before, yes or no? Yes, sir. My God, I thought you were dead. <laughs> right, class is alive and well. Okay. Now, A plus, B plus, C plus, let me not do A plus, B plus, C plus, you do it yourself, finish the design. Let us do some of the outputs. Um, main green, M1 green. M1 green, what are the conditions at which M1 is green? If you look at these columns, no? in state S2 it is 0, S1 it is 1, S2, S3, first three states, rest of states it is 0, is it not? So, this is a 0. In S1, M1 green, S2, I mean sorry, S2, M1 is green, S, okay, S1, S, M1 is green, S2, M1 is green, S3, M1 is green. Put 1, 1, 1, rest of them are zeros. Is it too much to ask to do these things for yourself? Please do this quickly. You see, you come in a, from a long holiday and uh, early morning. Many of you went home. Oh, why can't you be a little more lively today? Then let us do the ST. Somebody is going to tell me what is ST. I am tired of doing it all by myself. ST output. Okay, who is going to tell me ST output? Who there? Yeah, quickly. Just tell me what are the inputs I need to connect to the max. Look at ST column. No, you have this present state, and under what condition ST will be 1 in each of the present states? Person said 0, 0, 0, and what condition ST will be 1? Huh? No condition, unconditional, 1. So I put a 1. Is it not? Now completed. Then TMG, then TY, then say it again. TTG, let him say, because too many people talk at the same time, I can't hear properly. Then 
dy then tsg not tsg right and then and then finally no one zero see very simple so you can do a multiplexer based solution prom based solution gate based solution or pil based solution pla based solution whatever hardware your boss wants you to use based on the stock is available sometimes the boss decides the type of hardware you need to because that is the type of inventory you have in your company you want to use it or the same product line for company you don't want to use a rivals competitors hardware these are many reasons practical commercial reasons but you know how to do it whatever only one minor hitch i have not really completely taken care of how to convert my st st has two roles st sets a, this is a timer see the time the clock runs continuously the counter keeps running continuously i want to start it from zero and and when a count reach right so when st has to start the count but the count let us say a tmg i have used and it will keep counting it will keep counting so when st comes it will when st is removed st is removed it will not the count is frozen and then the next time st comes it starts from there but i want the start count always from zero only then my timings will be right my timings will be right tmg ttg tsg ty will be right only every time if i start with zero and then particular count is right so st has a role of resetting the count that is also possible actually instead of count enable st can do a resetting that is enough let the clock run continuously it resets is enough all st can do should do maybe this is a counter clock do you understand the problem here and the counter is programmed to give different counts as outputs ty tsg i am assuming in this order this is the lowest count next higher count this order this is not necessarily true but so there are two ways count can be enabled or disabled by st rather than that let the count be on all the time but st will always reset it to zero from then on it starts counting it keeps counting every time st comes it resets and then from zero it starts so when the count is reached it is taken and then it will continue but next st is going to anyway reset it again so this could be my st which in counter to reset actually it should not be called a start timer start timer in the sense it starts the timing of that particular interval st starts at start timing but for that interval you start so this could be the reset once st comes the first count it resets to 0 0 then on it counts as i said it will be one count less than what you want but doesn't matter supposing i have put a 1 kilohertz clock that means every millisecond it counts and i want 2 seconds i mean 2 minutes or even 1 minute i want 60 seconds so 1000 in 1 second and 16 to 1000 60000 counts i am going to count for tmg and if it is minus 1 doesn't matter or you program it for 2001 that's okay to 1001 that's a minor so that also has been sorted out now you have a complete solution for this the object of this exercise object of this exercise is all of these things are known to us i don't think introduce anything new you know how to design using multiplexers you know how to design using from you know how to draw state graphs you know how to translate a state graph into state table or a transition table but what is new is the systematic understanding of the problem and defining the various states 
define the various states and the transitions, what are the transitions allowed, not allowed, when the transition should happen and go to the nitty gritty details of the signals that is required, how to generate those signals, what hardware will be required. So, that you will be able to come up with an inventory of parts that you need to build this. Then the design becomes complete because a designer, as an engineer, as a designer, the role is to make sure it's all all I's are dotted and all T's are crossed. Until that time, it is not complete. Anything left? Because it is, it could be, you may have something in mind, but then somebody else may interpret it in some other way. So it becomes an ambiguous design. That's what we want to avoid. Okay. So we will. I want to show you one, only one more example. In this example, what I did was, I have used a very simple design in the sense the hardware is required is very little. All I need is a light, uh, uh, lights which are not under my control. We only generate signal for turning on a light, green light, blue light, I mean yellow light, red light and then if it is not there, you have to boost the signal voltage and current levels and then get a huge uh, thing circular disk get in our traffic light stations. Other than that, there is no hardly any hardware except the counter. The hardware, this hardware is called controlling hardware. The state graph implementation is the sequencing. I told you this word earlier. It is an algorithm, it is a program. Whether it is a programmable device you are using or fixed device you are using like multiplexers or gates, it is the sequence through which you want the circuit to go through. So, this table gives you the sequence of events and that is unique to the problem. Each problem has its own state table, state graph and a state table and then implementation of state table. You cannot do it in advance until the problem is known to you. On the other hand, if a circuit requires a lot of other hardware, which is in this case a counter. Suppose I give you a design in which large, large number of these hardware is available. Take a computer as an example. You may give the sequencing of the various function units but then there is a standard arithmetic logic unit, there is a memory, there is an input device, output device. I do not think we should design each one of them every time. This design has to be done, this is an algorithm, this is an algorithmic design. State graph has to be designed. You program, the state, you draw the state graph, program it for proper use. This is called algorithm. As I said the other day, it is called either sequence you want to call it or procedure you want to call it, procedure for going from state to state, the sequencing or algorithm, but other type of hardware which is commonly used hardware which may be required for a design, in this case very little except the counter may be and lights which are not under our control. Circuit like a computer, microprocessor, a calculator, which may need lot of off the shelf components, available components. I need to get them, I need to connect them together, I need to functionally define what I want, I need to connect them together, I need to operate on them, I need to give signals for them to start signals for them to clear, stop. So, if a problem is a little more involved, I will use two types of hardware. One type of hardware is what is known as the off the shelf components or available components, which can be bought in any standard store. You say 4 bit ALU, that is all you need to say. And the other hardware is the hardware which will result because of the state graph you will implement for that particular problem. For each problem, you need to draw a state graph, state table. MUX design or PROM design or PAL design. In addition, this extra hardware like a counter, like flip flops, like shift registers, like ALUs, like memory chips, those things I do not have to design and again and again and again. These are off the shelf available. So, next example, I want to take an example, oh, I want to take a case of a design in which we will have use some of those, we will have a mix of uh, some of the off, off the shelf components. Again, a simpler design, how, can, how much can you do in a class? A simple design, but the conceptually we will have to partition the problem into two parts. The parts which are available, you should know how to control them. The other part is designed by us, the controller, which issues the signals for controlling them to get the sequences we want. That is, will be the last example we will be working out in this class.